Hello everyone! I've made it no secret that I am a huge fan of Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. Although I don't play Daggerfall or Morrowind anymore in their vanilla states, entirely unmodded Daggerfall is my second favorite game in the series, behind Morrowind. With mods, however, Daggerfall is my favorite. They play very differently to one another, and Daggerfall is more like a fantasy life simulator than a sandbox, kind of the way Morrowind and Onward are. Daggerfall holds a single map the size of Great Britain, assembled on Bethesda's end through procedurally generated chunks. Likewise, the dungeons are procedurally generated through large vertical modules on a labyrinthine scale. I like dungeon crawlers a lot. And while I could just call it a day there and say I like it, the simulation aspect of Daggerfall has a web of political factions shifting in the background, through no action of the player, other than time passing, altering how the player is received by those they associate with. For example, let's say you joined the Knights of the Rose and you were suddenly disliked by Lane Lynn. Interrogating peasants may lead to discovering that an emissary of the Knights of the Rose offended people at court recently, impacting how you're seen as a result. Likewise, you may be liked by the Temple of RK through no action of your own, only to discover that they have a secret alliance with the Dark Brotherhood. Make no mistake, you won't succeed or fail at the main quest through these systems, but they may help or hinder your side quest or general adventuring activities based on who will want to help you and who won't. I could go on, but let's just say consistently I'm fascinated with long-form adventuring playthroughs in the setting of Daggerfall. All of this is vanilla, mind you. My average playthrough with Daggerfall is now a very different beast from the vanilla one due to how mods like basic roads, travel options, climates and calories, and more create a casual, laid-back series of treks across the fantasy world punctuated with either dungeon crawls or shopping sprees in towns, mass conflicts at dungeon exteriors, facing brand new monsters, and more. In amongst my thousands and thousands of hours of Daggerfall live streaming, Indigo Gaming took it upon himself to interview Ted Peterson and Julian LaFay. And through their interactions, they were convinced to make a new game. They decided to name this game Wayward Realms. I was blessed to have a couple discussions with them on Discord and then spent a couple weeks consulting in the most minor respects, basically just chatting with everyone about ideas. I signed a non-disclosure agreement regarding the project, so I can't talk about the whole lot regarding what we discussed. And I wasn't involved with it past those first few weeks. But now that they've released some marketing material for everyone to chew into, I can say that I am genuinely excited by what I did discuss with them, and I'm very happy that their Kickstarter has gotten off the ground. Unfortunately for me, their Kickstarter landed in the middle of a move. The wife and I have moved closer to our families because some folks are getting up there in years and we want to be closer to them. We're also in a larger house for now, so that's a good thing. It just happened that the move coincided with the Kickstarter, and now that I finally have a free week, I wanted to take some time to both signal boost this Kickstarter and discuss Kickstarters in general. So for anyone wondering where I stand, I'm absolutely throwing a little bit of money at this, and I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of results we will get. Kickstarters have an inherent risk, and I rarely ever pay into them. The most recent Kickstarter success I participated in was the System Shock remake. That took several extra years to materialize, and some of it isn't good enough for several people. I loved it, though. It's super important, though, to remember that Kickstarters are never a sure thing. At the end of the day, the people who are making Wayward Realms are industry veterans, but we've seen industry veterans like Richard Garriott and others making spiritual successors before. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. By my personal, unreliable accounting, only about in the ballpark of 20% of these spiritual successors by industry veterans ever take a shape most backers are pleased with. That's not great odds. From what I have been able to find, the developers are trying to fund a vertical slice of the game that they can sell early access to fund the rest of the game for, and or fish for investment money. This is a dangerous practice, and many games have failed this way, but some have succeeded too. 
So functionally speaking, where things stand now, the developers of the game are part-time indie devs who are working full-time unrelated jobs. This is important because it means that accelerating the development of the game is predicated on Kickstarter funding. This will allow them to forgo picking up more freelance work in favor of working on the game. In short, I truly support this Kickstarter, but the asterisks keep growing. I will say that I have faith in their ability to get this early access version out, but from that point on, who's to say what will happen? It is very possible that that early access version is where Wayward Realms dies. But now that I've front-loaded the risks, let's talk about what we can potentially get for our money. When we look at the various aspects of Daggerfall, we can say that other games have done these things and better. That's why we play games like Morrow and Oblivion Skyrim, or more simulation-oriented games like Mountain Blade, or more sandboxy games like Kenshi. So if Wayward Realms isn't bringing better graphics, sound, or combat, what are they bringing to the table? Well, Wayward Realms is leaning heavily into procedurally generated storytelling. The current design sports no main quest, but rather handwritten world events that tie into the quests the player has chosen to embark upon to create a procedurally generated story arc for the player. Radiant quests have become a sort of dirty phrase under modern Bethesda, and that's because people think of a quest from Fallout 4 or Starfield where someone will talk about a local problem, say they'll mark it on your map, and it's on the other side of the game space with no plot hooks or anything to make it interesting. Just go there, do thing, return. The thing is, before Todd Howard rebranded things like fast travel and radiant quests in his marketing materials, Daggerfall had them as just travel and side quests. The main differentiating factor between Daggerfall's side quests and a modern Bethesda radiant quest is that side quests will typically have a block of text ranging from a single paragraph to a couple pages explaining why you are doing what you're doing. Behind that flavor text, you're still going to a place killing a target and coming back or going to a place, getting a thing, and coming back. Sometimes there's an extra twist here or there, but the formula is mostly unchanged. But the impact of that flavor text on the average player who has an imagination is huge. These feel like real quests despite being procedurally generated, and that's because of their flavor. These quests were handwritten by people aiming to first and foremost write with hooks for game design, variables to replace with location and target name. How do these differ from modern Bethesda's design? Not too much, except in modern Bethesda, they hire game designers to do writing, not the other way around. In theory, there's space for both development positions, for game designers and writers, separately, and then having a strong central creative vision coordinating both. That's how many CRPGs were designed. So where Wayward Realms is leaning heavily in their design are on the handwritten, procedurally offered storytelling, where each quest you choose to engage with will kind of snowball into each other. And when a world event occurs, the outcome will be influenced by the procedural generation of those various quests you did. The individual quests and their outcomes are handwritten, but the interactions with the world and one another seem to be governed by a larger procedural system. I'm all in favor of this if they can pull it off. I like the direction they're attempting to go. I've heard some criticisms about art style and other shenanigans, but I really do not want a Daggerfall-like to try to compete with Morrowind or Oblivion or Skyrim. I would like a Daggerfall-like to play to its own strengths. Even if those strengths will keep a niche game with a niche appeal. I don't usually buy into early access games as a rule, so this is gonna be very interesting to keep an eye on as the developers create a Daggerfall like that can potentially surpass Elder Scrolls II. I'll be sure to have the Kickstarter and relevant sites linked below. I highly recommend checking them out if you are a fan of Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. Check the links on screen for more Yippity Yap, and I will see you all next time.